the waterfall of ghosts. There once was a small village in Japan very near a cascade called the waterfall of ghosts. No one could say for sure why it was called this. Some people thought they saw the twisting shapes of ghosts in the mist that rose from the rocks upon which the water poured. Some claimed to hear ghostly voices or the voices of gods or demons in the roar. It was considered a holy place, so the villagers built a small shrine at the foot of the falls and left a little wooden money box there for visitors to make offerings. One frosty evening in the last century, the women and girls who worked at the local factory where they spun hemp into lengths of rope gathered around the big iron stove after their work was done. As they warmed their hands by the coal fires, they amused themselves by telling ghost stories. By the time a dozen stories had been told, even the bravest began to listen with new ears to the whisper of wind at the doors and window frames. They began to grow uneasy at the idea of walking home through the dark. Then, one of the younger girls who was enjoying the little thrills of fear she was getting, said, Just think of going all alone tonight to the waterfall of ghosts. Her suggestion provoked shudders, followed by nerves of laughter. Why, said the little girl, unwilling to let the matter rest, I'll give up all the hemp I spun today to any person who goes. So will I, exclaimed another, caught up in the spirit of the game. And I will, another promised. Soon all but one of the women had offered her day's output of rope as a prize to anyone brave enough to go to the waterfall that night. The only spinner who did not join with the others was a young woman named Ukatsu, the wife of the village carpenter. Listen, she said, if you all really agree to hand over the hemp you spun today, I will go to the waterfall of ghosts. Her words were met with cries of astonishment. Most thought she was joking, but when she repeated the challenge several times, they realized she was serious. Each of the spinners promised to give up her share of the day's work to Akatsu if she went to the waterfall. But how will we know if she really goes there? Several women asked. Why let her bring back the money from the shrine, said the old woman to the others. That will be proof enough. She can return the money in the morning after she has shown it to us. I'll bring it, you'll see, boasted Akatsu, who did not believe in ghosts. In her greed, she had also made up her mind to take the money from the offering box before she returned it. Bundling the warm robe around her, she hurried out into the street. The night was frosty but clear. The young woman's wooden clogs made crunching sounds on the ice-crusted road as she hurried down the empty street. All the doors and windows of the house she passed were shut tight against the piercing cold. But Okatsu only pulled her robe more tightly around her and thought of the coins she would take from the shrine in a short while and the hemp she would take from her fellow workers in the morning. Soon she left her village behind and hurried along the road that ran between two frozen rice fields that glittered in the starlight. For nearly half an hour she traveled through the great silence, then she heard the distant roar of the waterfall of ghosts. A little while later she began following a narrow path that wound under the high cliffs. Her way grew darker and more dangerous as she neared the bottom, but she had visited the falls before so she knew her way. The roar of the cascade grew louder and louder. The path ran around a huge boulder and opened into a stretch of pebbled shore. The sound of the falls was now deafening. She could see the water like a shining ribbon of silk against the black cliffs. In the starlight, she could just make out the curved roof of the shrine and the shadowy square of the money box underneath. She rushed forward eagerly and stretching out her hand to take it, but the sound of the waterfall suddenly became a babbling of crying voices. Oh, wicked woman! For a moment, Ukatsu stood frozen, gripped with terror. But she was a bold young woman. It's only the sound of water, she said to herself. She snatched up the money box and ran. Behind her, the chorus of ghastly voices cried. Okatsu did not stop running until she reached the top of the path. There she paused a moment, gasping for breath. Then she ran back down towards the village. Around her, snow began to fall lightly on the ice-covered falls. Then faster and faster, the wind rose and tried to push her back the way she came. In its howling, she thought she could hear angry voices crying, Okatsu, Okatsu. But she kept on, her robe wrapped snugly around her and only her eyes uncovered. The snow was drifting so high that even her tall clogs could not keep her feet dry. But she was back in the village now, and she could see the lights of the hemp factory ahead. Before she went any further, she took shelter in an alleyway between two buildings and opened up the money box. She took all but a handful of copper coins and put these in her kimono. Then she walked toward the lighted windows of the factory. The other woman all stayed to see if Akatsu would make good on her boast. They cried out in amazement when she entered, panting with the money box from the shrine. They brought her to the fire, asking breathless questions about what happened. Akatsu told them in a few sentences about hearing ghostly voices, though she did not tell them that the voices called her wicked. She said nothing about the coins she had stolen. When the old woman opened the box and saw only a few copper coins in the bottom, Ukatsu was loudest and crying out how miserably people were to leave such a miserable offering at the shrine.
A braveyard, Atsu said the young girl whose challenge started the whole business. You have certainly earned the hemp we had promised. The others all agreed and their good naturedly turned their days out port over to Akatsu. Then they hurried away to their own homes. When she was alone, Akatsu took the stolen coins out of her kimono to count them. But the offering box on the floor beside her feet suddenly began to rock back and forth. Oh, what is this? cried the startled young woman. As if to answer her, the lid of the box suddenly flew open and a white mist like steam issued from it. Katsu looked in horror as the mist began to take strange forms and suddenly became a howling cloud of ghosts. Their bodies were drawn out to amazing lengths, their legs dwindled away to nothingness, their necks were long and twisted like snakes. They stretched their long arms out and clutched at Akatsu with their thin, pale fingers. Around and around the frightened woman they spun like a horrible whirlpool, screeching, Wicked woman, wicked woman. Akatsu thought she might faint. She sank to her knees and begged the ghost to leave her alone. Then an idea occurred to her. She took the coins she still held in her hands and returned them to the offering box. When all the money had been put back, the ghosts poured themselves like a waterfall down into the box. The lid closed with a snap. Akatsu took the box and hurried back to the shrine. There she replaced it with a promise to give the spirits of that place all the money she would get from selling the hemp. This she did the very next morning and she would never trouble the ghosts again.